Hi, everyone. So, how many of you today、um, take performance into consideration when you're developing your front end apps? Okay, I'll take your word for it.、Um, so, performance is tricky, right? It, we don't want to overdo it, but we don't want to get too far where things start to go very slow and our users are, start to feel the pain. So, how many of you did? Have to rework your app once performance、uh, issues started to manifest. So, yeah, that's、uh, something we need to work on, right? So, my name is Yoav. I'm a senior front end developer at Cloudinary, and we help、uh, big brands and companies manage their media in the cloud. So, for the purpose of this talk, I've built this、uh, small app. Let's me view my、uh, photos from my Cloudinary account. And、uh, Cloudinary performance is, is a big issue. We、uh, have to deliver media, video, images to our clients'、uh, applications with high performance and efficiency. So we take performance seriously also in the apps we build.、Um, and this app will.、Um, It consists of this、uh, hierarchy of components, and we'll focus on the photos grid and photo item components where we'll see the bottlenecks occurring. So, if I quickly switch to my app, you can see I can view my photos, I can、uh, select a few, and then I can minimize here and see a, a larger resolution. Of my selected photos. Then I can switch back to my grid and we're back. Now, you may have noticed that it's already feeling a little sluggish, it's a little slow. So, let's, if we open our DevTools、um, and I go and select an item here, so hopefully you can see this.、Um, Chrome is already complaining that it's taking way too long for my handler to take place. So, we're over 500 milliseconds, that's half a second. Just for clicking one item in the grid. That's pretty bad.、Uh, if I go to the performance tab and start recording, and I select an item and I stop my recording,、uh, if we zoom in here, we can see that there's a lot of work going, taking place in our browser, and that's obviously something we need to deal with. So if we break this down a little,、um, at the top, We get this frame per second indicator.、Uh, it's showing in red because、uh, the user is going to feel this, this issue, this, this sluggishness. So it's already telling us we need to deal with it.、Uh, below it, we see the CPU chart. We see the breakdown of what the, the CPU, or my machine CPU, has to work on once I click the,、uh, the item. If we hover over the frames、uh, bar there in the green, We're down, it shows us we're down to two frames per second. So ideally, we want to be in 60 frames per second. Now we're down to two. That's, that's a problem. And in the main flame graph, we can see all the execution of our JavaScript, everything that's taking place、uh, once we click our button. And below, we see again the breakdown of, of the work that's taking place. And we can see that scripting, meaning JavaScript, Is, is mostly what's、uh, taking place.、Right. But looking at the user timing, it's a little hard to get a sense of what's happening, especially in our React app. And by default, we see the, the main、uh, graph rather than the user timing. So if we expand the user timing, we can actually see which components are being、uh, updated, are being re rendered、uh, in our, in, during our event handling. So, in this case, my photos grid has updated, and so did all of my photo grid items. All the items in my grid just re rendered just by clicking one item. So, again, we have a lot of proof that something is going wrong. So, our journey in this next、uh, 10 minutes or so is to get us down from around 600 milliseconds to around 16. So, we want to be at 16 because that's what gets us 60 frames per second. This allows the browser to also deal with other callbacks and、um, reflow, repainting of, of our, our DOM 
we want to allow the browser to do its work. Right, so we'll go through five different areas where we can improve our performance to get us there. Uh, just a quick word about the uh, state of the app. Um, I have a photos array where I keep uh, different uh, properties like the ID, the URL, whether it's selected or not, and so on. So if we notice in the photos grid, well, what, what I'm doing here is I'm getting all the photo items and then I'm passing those to my photo item component. So I'm getting too much data at this point. I'm, uh, just jumping around. Um, I don't need all this, uh, all this data uh, in my photos grid. So we want to select data at the lowest point we can. So by this, now I'm doing, uh, I'm selecting the photos IDs only and I'm passing the ID to the photo component. And now in my photo item uh, component, I need to write my selector that goes and, and uses the, the ID. And, um, sorry. And, uh, and we'll grab the item. So when we implement this, when we do this change in the app, and I'll use these recordings because I have very short time. Uh, and here I'm using the, re the profiler, the new profiler in re the React uh, extension in Chrome. And we can see that even though I moved around my selectors, I'm still, uh, we can see in the um, painted bars that Photos Grid just re-rendered and all the photo items just re-rendered. So we're still not there, still more work we need to do. So next, let's have a look here. Uh, the selected property of each photo is nested in my photos array. So this is, I think this is a problem as well. Um, why is it a problem? Because we're using immutable da data, and whenever I'm changing my selection, true or false, I'm, I need to actually uh, go inside the nested structure of my data to update the photos array. Because this is immutable, it's going to create a new photos array each time. So what I, what I do to improve on this is I separate the selected properties. And now when I go in and change or have an action to change the selected value for a photo, it's going to affect just that selected array and not the entire photos array. So let's take a look. When we do this, again, using the React profiler, we record the interaction. I click an item. And now, Photos Grid didn't re-render. So we're getting there. It's improving. However, notice that these colored bars um, say that the photo items are still rendering, even though we just changed one item. So still more work to do. Next, we need to remember that um, when we're using pure component from React or connect from React Redux, what they're doing internally is they're doing shallow compare. They're going over our props, comparing those uh, to the previous run, the previous update. Now, why is that an issue? Because in my selector, what I'm doing is I'm creating this item property in my props every update. And this is going to be a different object as far as uh, the strict equality that shallow compare does uh, is concerned. And this is going to then say, OK, I have a new item. I need to re-render. So what can we do about it? Well, one thing we can do is we can spread the props. So instead of creating a new item in my props object, I simply use spread, and then I get a, a list, basically, of, of simple variables that shallow compare can now tell if they are different or not. And in the case that we update one item, um, all the rest will not need to be updated. So once we do that, we apply this change. I go and select an item. 
Well, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, we're actually just rendered one photo item, and that's it. All the rest didn't update. So are we there yet? Is this good enough? I have a hunch that it's not there yet. And let's see when we record now with the dev tools, the performance tab in the dev tools, what happens when I click an item. We're actually still executing a lot of JavaScript. And what is this JavaScript? Well, our selector is still executing each and every time for each and every photo item. So we can actually, if we zoom in here, hopefully you can see this, um, my photo item selector um, is being executed, and I can even go to directly to my code and see what is going on. So again, even though we are not re-rendering all of the grid, we are still executing too much JavaScript. So this, uh, sorry, this takes me to the next topic, memoization. Um, shortly, what it means is that we can write functions that store their previous uh, result. So the next time they get the same input, they will give us that cache result rather than um, execute again, rather than compute again. So we want to apply memoization in our code. There are different libraries that do this, like fast memoize or memoize one. But uh, what I use in my project and other projects here is uh, reselect, which does, it's not a memoization library. It's a selector library, basically. It allows me to compose selectors. But it also does memoization by default. So here, uh, what I'm doing, I'm changing my photo item selector to use reselect. And I create a selector which uses other selectors as input. So these two in, uh, selectors will uh, execute and then pass that data to my final selector here. Now, what's good about reselect is that every selector is memoized. So in case the input didn't change, the function doesn't run. And it's going to just return the previous, uh, the previous result. To be able to use this in our photo component, in our photo item component, I need to make sure I, I pass uh, a new selector for each instance. Since we have many items in the grid, we have to make sure that we are creating an instance of the selector per, um, per instance of the component. Otherwise, caching will not be effective. It will simply keep changing. So with memoization in place, let's Let's now try and record the interaction. And now we're down to, let's see, we're down to around, I'll zoom in, around to 40 milliseconds. So we started with around 600. We're now down to, to around 40. So that's pretty good. But I think we can actually improve a little bit more. Remember, I wanted us to get to around 16 milliseconds. So let's, let's try, try a little bit more. And for that, let's see what happens when we render the grid. So I showed you that I can go from the, the larger view back to the grid. And if I re record this interaction, you can see that, again, we are doing a lot of work. We, are just, we just re-rendered the entire grid and all the items in it. Now, I only have a few hundred items in this grid, and already it's taking more than a second to render, which is a lot. And this is, this is a MacBook Pro. This is a pretty strong machine. Imagine our users don't usually have these kind of uh, uh, devices. So the last technique we, I want to show you is uh, that of windowing. So what are we doing here in the Photos Grid? And we are naively just iterating over all of my photo items. So this is, we just use Map. You know, React Docs tells us this is good, but um, when we have a lot of items in our, in our DOM, this be becomes a problem. So what we want to do is we want to apply windowing, which basically lets us just render the items the user is seeing right now, maybe a few before and a few after, to get this smooth scrolling experience, but we don't get to render the entire collection at one go. So there's a great uh, React window library, which helps us to do just that. 
And switching from this map that just iterate over the collection, we change to uh, the fixed size grid from uh, React window. And we uh, need a little bit of coding, but it's, it's definitely worth it. Because once we do this, and we apply windowing, selecting, you can see now that the grid is always, always contain just a few items. As even if, if we scroll up and down, it's just a, a limited set of items. And now notice that when I expand back to the grid, the handler took just less than 100 milliseconds, when previously it took over a second. And finally, if we check the selection and we see how long it takes, uh, we can see that we're down to, uh, well, you can't, it's hard to see, but we're actually down to 10 milliseconds. So or, all the way from 600 to 10. So following these five steps for improvement, we did it. We got down from 600 to 10, and our app is much more performant. Thank you. Oh. The, the code for the app and all the, the branches is available at this URL on my GitHub. Thanks. <laughs>